My name is David R. Harper, and the piece that I'm exhibiting is titled Field Study, Boy in the Meadow. The inspiration for this piece is actually fairly minimal. It's a moment, a picture that I saw, but it's what comes after I see that picture that inspires the greater thing. I'll take a history or a situation, a narrative, and try to actually visually create that moment. When a viewer approaches my work, I like them to have this feeling of something's happened here. You know, and it involves them in the investigation of the narrative. I'm often looking at the moments in between, you know, that are not exposed, the non-visual moments. And I try to create a visual diorama that kind of pinpoints different moments to build up to this one story or one history. My work is unsettling. Um, it has an uneasiness about it, and I try to calm people's nerves by incorporating familiarity in the materials. I incorporate a lot of things, ceramic, textile, woodworking. I have a strong focus on, on hand making and I love you know, tactile materials that involve a lot of manipulation and exploration. I think that that's something that for the viewer, it can draw them into the work. It's, these are familiar materials. These are things that they, are, they understand but I use them in the way that's unfamiliar. And I create objects and situations that are unique and interesting um, and unknown to the viewer. So it kind of leaves people that look at my work in this space where they're questioning what they're seeing, but they can stand in front of it and understand um, the material. I think that there's a duality inherent in ceramic that I really enjoy. On one hand, you know, it's, I can manipulate it in any way that I want to create you know, endless possibilities. But secondly, when it's fired, it becomes anchored. It becomes permanent and it becomes a cornerstone of an installation that I can rely on to build off of. Part of the crossover material exploration in the piece is using these dried flowers that have been embedded in the shelves themselves. You know, I've laid them out, I've indexed them in this very particular way uh, to show the the gathering, the collecting of something. The use of these dried flowers also references the use of floral decals in ceramic ware. Continuing with you know, my fascination with materiality, I chose to do these three goat heads that sit on the shelves in ceramic because of their hardness. These objects are supposed to be soft. They're supposed to be a material. They're supposed to flow. But I wanted to kind of create this uncanny imbalance by using a very hard and lasting material. They become rigid and monumental. Another important element of this work is the disembodied head and hand of the boy that's referred to in the title of the piece. The head and the hand obviously for me you know, represents the two most important aspects of me making a piece. My hands that create the work and my head that conceives of the idea and provides the narratives. So it's not only important to the, the story of the piece, because I'm trying to create this world where you know that this boy is present, but they're also there to remind the audience that I'm present in the making of it. I hope people will see you know, my installation and my work and realize that you know, there doesn't need to be material limitations. I think a story is best told from many different perspectives. And for me in that studio, it means using you know, a multitude of materials. Each material incorporated into the piece, whether it be ceramic or wood or cast paper, is a different voice that contributes to the narrative of the work.